people like OfferPad have opportunity right now because if you're only thinking about your commission right. and not what's right for the consumers. This is Byron Lazine and Nicole White, and you are tuned into episode 123 of The Real Word. Word is up. The word is up. Nicole, you were just saying uh, before we started the show, you, you want the old cold uh, intro back, the joking around, all the off the show well, stuff. So I guess I could understand why we couldn't do that because it, it didn't really feel all that natural to be Zooming with you, I have to be honest. Mm. So there wasn't really much back and forth because it was like you were so worried about like your lighting. Does the internet work? Yes, and like I have lighting, you don't. Like there was a lot of drama around that. So we did. Sam said this is the best the lit best. show for the real I feel world. Like it ever. deserves a medal then, yeah. from what I understand. But we just did. Okay, so you know what I think it is though, too, Sam. We used to have a black table. We're now in this brown color, yeah. and before it was white, and I think the white was reflecting. I think we finally found our right podcasting table. So. We've done some adjusting here in the podcast room, which mm-hmm. would be kind of cool to show everybody this podcast room, especially once we get everything finished up over well, we there. We should do that one day. Yeah, we will. We'll do one like day. a behind the scenes thing. But in the meantime, we've got two rackets and a marketeer of the week. Racket number one. Both of the first two rackets are Inman. All right, don't. They're doing a uh, Inman Connect right now. It's going I, on like right now. Right now. I live. saw that. I, I keep on getting these emails like, Nicole, you've missed out. And I'm like, oh, what I, I miss out I think you were supposed on? to speak this morning. And then, <laughs> No. <laughs> All right, first one from Inman, the uh, it's the offer pad. We've talked about offer pad in the past, and they're saying first offer pad wanted to just buy your home, now they want to list it. So agents, offer pad is coming after your listings. Consumers can now choose a direct quick close sale, like they were able to before, or a more traditional listing process. The move may rankle many in the real estate rankle. industry. No, rankle is okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is a rankle. rankle like What's ankle. Right? It's when somebody hmm. attacks your ankle. Rankle. I don't, did, you, uh, did you just <laughs> make that up? I did. Who have long worried <laughs> about technology companies moving into the space traditionally served by real estate agents. So here's the deal. If you take the cash offer with offer pad, obviously you move quickly through that. You get an offer within 24 hours. You have mm-hmm. no showings. You mm-hmm. pick your closing day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Free move. They mm-hmm. do the move for free. Mm-hmm. You like that? Whatever that means. Free move. There's uh, probably some really, movers. really fine print there. And then uh, you can even do an extended stay. So you could stay in your home for a while. Anyways, mm-hmm. if you list with offer pad, mm-hmm. you, here's what's interesting. You get to keep that cash offer mm-hmm. in your pocket. Oh, so if it doesn't work out with the agent, you can still. There's, so if it doesn't work out in the listener, you don't get your number, you can, or what they reference in here is the world dramatically changes. The next thing happens in our world that puts everybody into a tizzy hmm. and you can now, I'll take the offer. How long? So it's always there. How long? Does it say how long? It appears that uh, you have the cash offer in your pocket, list mm-hmm. with confidence, knowing that you have the freedom to activate mm-hmm. your competitive offer pad cash purchase offer at any time when they say at any time i'm assuming they mean at any time while you're listed with offer pad okay so basically as a seller now Mm -hmm. if you do this you know your worst case scenario you know your worst case scenario and you're always operating not from the true multiple offers because you're not going to get highest and best you already have their highest and best offer pads cash offer but you're always operating at multiple offer situations you say that the offer pad's going to be your agent in that situation so whether they would say that to to buyer agents it'd be completely misleading wow but just from a seller's perspective well, I of guess, strength okay. so i guess what you what you would know though is going into this if you were going to an offer pad listing you would always know that there is another offer there so You'd have to sort of educate yourself as the buyer's agent. You got to educate the buyer. Yeah. Like, listen, they have an offer, but it is their cash offer. Which clearly blows because they're listed on the They didn't take market. it the first time. They're right. out there looking for yeah. more. Hmm. So don't be afraid mm-hmm. of that offer out there. So is it an offer pad agent or is, the, is offer pad yeah. sort of doing like Zillow and grabbing another? Nope. like So they're doing their own agent. And here's where I think offer pad and Brian Bear is the CEO. We've talked about offer pad we've talked about brian a little bit Mm -hmm. i don't know brian like to do a a podcast with brian he looks like a a young fella too looks like a younger guy Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I've well, read actually, it looks like he looks like he went to picture day at school, doesn't he? <laughs> he's like the, the, it, the same background as like a, if you were in school. He has a headshot in the article if you want to check it out. <laughs> but here's what's interesting. So the, the uh, listing fee will be, if you list with them, it's going to be between five and a half and 6%. So they're going to do mm -hmm. 6% listings, mm -hmm. which in most markets, six is, you, you know, either standard or maybe even above average okay. right okay. potentially I it could be. To talk about that i, I don't know like, i feel like we it gotta talk be. about bananas six bananas six bananas uh could be on the higher side well let's just for reference redfin was saying hey list with us with list with redfin we have employees that will mm -hmm. list oh but their and it fees was like, remember their fees were almost nine ten percent bananas no, 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 no that was when when they were doing the home but oh. but on just the listing remember they were like as low as like one percent it was crazy low which mm -hmm. is why the Redfin agents were really bad. Like how does Redfin make money and then pay mm -hmm. the agents? Like, have you ever met a Redfin agent? They're grossly gross. They're terrible at their job. Oh, are we, we're going there? They're terrible. Redfin agents have haven't I? met a good one yet. I feel like. Because they're getting paid no money. No, but so, I did run into a Compass agent up here recently. So, so, they're, so they're not making the money, the other agents. Mm -hmm. No, Compass, Redfin, totally different. No, I know, the spectrum. I know. Yeah. Just, I knew that there was a, a, a name that, Yes. But what I'm getting at is they're charging 6%, mm -hmm. according to Bear. The real estate advisors are licensed agents and they're offer pad employees mm -hmm. rather than independent contractors. Oh. So they have enough margin mm -hmm. to hire, in my opinion, lo mm -hmm. looking at this, they're going to have enough margin to hire legit listing agents, a listing team. Okay. Okay. Team, a listing team. I would call it a listing team. There's going to be a team. They did. They referred to it as a uh, yeah, like, offer pads listing team. Includes yeah. experts in real estate, renovation, and marketing, the hmm. company said. Interesting. It is interesting because if they're actually competitive with, you mentioned Compass, with the great Compass agent in your marketplace or the, the Sotheby's or like in our market, William Ravis They're going to have to be, they're going to have to be a team. They're going to have to really be Offer. able to execute what is said here right. renovation marketing, marketing. and uh, negotiation right. experience offer pad can afford to employ people that have those skills and when you have an employee as opposed to an independent contractor right offer pad now has a lot more control over the process mm -hmm. which means the experience for the consumer becomes very consistent right Agents, you should be worried about what OfferPad is implementing. You should never be worried about the Redfin model. I'm going to employ somebody and not pay them any money, and that's and we're going to pass that um, savings along to the consumer. That's a discount broker. We've seen that for well, years. Well, what's super Don't interesting though that. is that that one agent probably has. It's sort of like way back in the day when agents got. Um, well, it's a little different, but similar. Um, all like banks gave them all of the foreclosure properties. Like, and yeah. you just you have so many of them that you're not even responding to anybody because you just don't give a shit either you, where redfin was such a small i mean those agents are probably being worked to the bone you're never they're never getting back to no. you we're here if you have a team set up of this person's doing this as you know like it it and they're makes paid sense. right accordingly to their expertise right this is interesting because the reason why companies like offer pad are popping up in brian's words there is a, a better way for people to buy and sell homes. He authentically believes there's a better way than using traditional real estate agents for consumers to buy and sell homes. Mm -hmm. Now they're charging the same rate. Now, if their experience is better, right? if that uh, process is very consistent, you can line up, you know, 10 people in our town right. that use 10 different agents and they're going to have a wildly different experience well, across the board. Again, what's super interesting here is how long have we been talking about the fact that brokerages need to start offering out this instant offer because what they're now doing is they now have a seller in hand because they're offering to buy this house for a certain amount it's not exactly what they want but instead of them walking away they're now still getting them mm -hmm. as a customer they're still getting them as a client because oh you don't want this well here's what we'll sell it for now on the open market with a with a with a real one of our real estate agents so i mean they're getting they're generating the lead why the flip wouldn't they figure out a way to do it traditionally like everybody else is yeah and, and offer pads kind of covering both of those solutions i feel like they need a better name though i'm not so they're i don't know that i'd have like an offer pad their listed option house, free 
show ready home services. So we'll get your home ready, mm -hmm. uh, receive ser services that are free to uh, perfect your home before going on the market. You have that cash offer in your pocket. Yep. You get a home improvement advance. Okay. A lot of companies have a lot talked of them about are. this. Yep, right? That's not anything proprietary. You get this dedicated expert and support, that listing team. Mm -hmm. uh, personal team is ready to help hmm. you through the whole process. I like that. Maybe we should use that word in marketing. I like that you have your personal team. A personal okay, dedicated a, team. Here's your personally dedicated listing team. And certainly they're going to be able to, you know, with the, uh, the money that the capital that offer pet has, they're going to be able to show their value in terms of getting internet leads on your listing. Mm -hmm. That's how they got you in the first place to sign up for mm -hmm. offer pet. Look, they launched with. yesterday. Yeah. This, this one June here, one. this one here, if I'm an agent and they work with Keller Williams still, so mm -hmm. they still have the partnership. Uh, they act as the capital behind Keller Williams iBuyer business. Uh, Bear said they, that will continue even as OfferPad moves into now listing, listing homes. This one's interesting. I've been saying it for years. You go back to any of my videos, I've been saying it for a long time. If somebody perfects the employee model of real estate agents, that's gonna dramatic. If somebody actually perfects it, mm -hmm. makes it right. Mm -hmm. And the consumer's experience. Employees yeah. on on average, not the top independent contract, not the top 10% mm -hmm. of independent contractor real estate agents in the game, but on average, employees will beat out independent contractors consistently if they're paid what they're worth. Right. Well, I think what's super interesting though is I'd love to know how long they've been working on this for because I'm certain they're also seeing, and I guess I, I can only really speak to our area. I hate to say the whole, the whole country, but... I mean, right now with inventory being so low, things are selling so quickly. Yeah. Where right a now, lot here. of right, right, where a lot of sellers don't need that quick sale to somebody with cash just to get it off their docket. Where it yeah. was smart for them to pivot. I mean, I think there's, I think there's been a lot of pivoting. I think there's going to continue to be a, a lot of pivoting. I don't think we're done with pivoting. I mean, I, I think it's, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah, it's a way for them not to like lose a lead or just deal in a right, referral basis forget where, it. like yeah. are you kidding me my house used to be worth two dollars now it's worth a million i mean gosh how many calls are you getting on that lately i Let's think they're on i think they're on to something and yeah. it it would only be a racket if we don't pay attention to it so right. pay attention number racket number two why buyer representation is critical in new home construction you know what was odd about this nicole please tell is me. They say here, it can happen to any agent. Your buyers visit a new construction site without you and you lose out on the commission. So mm -hmm. John Giffen, who wrote the uh, article, he's an agent. Mm -hmm. uh, he wrote it from that angle. Yeah, the that headline doesn't even match up with that. It's it's odd. I, I'm, I, was, I thought it was going to come from the consumer angle and that's the angle we're going, going to cover here. But if mm -hmm. you want to read the article, it's linked up. Mm -hmm. He took the angle of... You could, you you know, a buyer that you're working with could go, and he even references Florida. This, this is the only state that really I have awareness of where this could happen a lot because there's so many new construction communities right. where your buyer could just be interested. They have, they have the sales office open a lot of times, Nicole, all day long. Right. It'll be like nine to five right. all day long, seven right. days a week. And I bet most of these buyer or these builders too have a in-house sale they as do. opposed to having a, so th obviously they're, they Paying haven't less mo or more. most of them have an in-house sales team some of them will use an agent and make them their in-house sales agent right. so the buyer could go there be wildly impressed i went last year in uh, collier county florida and i visited a toll brothers project because hmm. it doesn't like i see toll brothers ever you yeah, know they do beautiful work though they do great work yeah. national yep and i just wanted to go see, i had never been to this community and i like looking at stuff so you I, like looking at stuff i like looking at stuff you do you know hmm. i do yeah i like i like i like that kind of uh, um part of the game hmm. so go to their sales office and their sales office blew me away mm -hmm. so they had these tables that were all screens so they could bring up and you could just on the table flip through different floor plans right. and different layouts. Right. They had probably 30 different style homes. I mean, these are big communities, 800 plus home communities. Right. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, villas or townhomes, and then you have single family homes, right. and then you have like really expensive And then expensive community ones. pools, probably. Community amenities, schools. you have all kinds of stuff yeah. built in there. 
but when you go to these sales offices and like this Toll Brothers one, it is an experience. It is, I mean, they, they probably spend a half a million dollars on the sales office. Well, and that was smart. And it, you know, it's like a separate building in inside of the community. And so I can see why a buyer would go there. And it's not like, you know, like here when you have a, a new construction, you know, we live in these small towns in Connecticut. It might be a subdivision where there's like three homes, like, or three lots that are like left because they, they couldn't sell them in the 90s when the original subdivision started. Yeah, and so, so the amount of builders that have owned these lots over the last like 10 years. And yeah. so you have like one house that's half done that you can walk through and look at the studs where there you have like 20 homes that are completely finished and walked through. But when you're going through the actual community, you're like, there's like 80 homes being built right now. Are those going to be done? Oh, those are all sold. Right. Oh, those are all sold. Yeah. Like those aren't available. Yeah. Oh, I got so like so then you start as somebody visiting it for the first time. Like, well, when did you start those? Right. Oh, like two months ago. Right. So like, do I need to buy like right now? Right. You, can I go get my checkbook? Yeah. And that's what's happening where they're getting so excited. They're they've got this wild experience. They're seeing activity. They're seeing construction happening, mm -hmm. and they're they know they got their shit together, and they're buying on the spot. Right. Why not? And so now if you've been working with that buyer, this is the angle that John took in the article. If you've been working with that buyer as a buyer agent, you're out if you didn't have a buyer broker mm. for him. So he gets into like educating. Yeah, it's just, that's not at all what the topic was. That's not at all how you should be thinking as an agent. That's why people like OfferPad have opportunity right now because if you're only thinking about your commission right. and not what's right for the consumer. So right. Nicole, yes. going back to the overall headline, Yes. If somebody's buying new construction, mm -hmm. should they have their own buyer's agent or should they deal direct with the listing agent or builder or in-house sales team? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can answer this so many different ways. I feel like it's an asset to have an agent. So again, we're talking about, I'm talking about strictly. And you've been negotiating a new construction unit. Yeah. Where there is, where there's communication from there's communication. Is there communication from the buyer agent? Everywhere. On that one? There's I'm, communication from the builder, the developers. There's, there's lots so, of communication there is happening. There's so much communication. Is there happening. too many bosses? It's happening on text, it's in happening the in emails. So, I'm, but I also am in the process of representing a buyer in the building process. We did not originally start looking at new construction, but obviously they felt comfortable enough with me that they wanted me to help them in the building process because they didn't have answers to questions obviously buyers sometimes are timid to go directly but i'm going to be 100 percent honest once you get into contract with the builder that buyer is dealing directly with that builder they are picking out their finishes i'm not going there to help them pick out their unless they want me to help them but after oftentimes the that's how it's done and that's how it should be done yeah like there's so so i mean do, do, do did they need me they may have needed me to get there because they didn't know that they wanted new construction i luckily know enough about building that I could at least like oh no that's a good cabinet oh no that's a good finish oh that's a good furnace that's good light like they didn't like they're a good builder to give them confidence in participating with that builder but I mean once that ink was dry I mean she is dealing directly with if not the builder then obviously somebody on his sales staff that is telling her or him but in this situation her um you know finishes and you need to pick out this now and like you need to pick out this and here's where you need to go and I, I mean, so, I don't, I don't, I really didn't even know what the house looked like until mm. like yesterday when I walked through it. I was like, oh, I like, you know, good job with your siding, you know? So you were along for the ride? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, but it was also a very long process. I think we went under contract in October. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's winter here. So there was only so many things that could and happen. And you did your job getting them into position to know that we new looked, construction was right for them. We looked so, at homes for almost four months where it just, it became so apparent that new construction was so necessary for them based on their needs, based on like, they, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, to get them there was cer certainly important. Here's what I'll say, because I don't want to say, yes, you need a buyer agent because... Right. Not every buyer would need need a buyer agent necessarily. Right. What you absolutely need to do if you're a buyer considering new construction is either through the buyer agent community or a buyer agent that you're working with or attorneys or people in the community, you need to do your homework on the builder. Absolutely. You need to make sure that builder has actually built, has actually 
completed projects, has actually done the work they're claiming to mm -hmm. do and doesn't have a whole bunch of litigation yeah. from people that are that have gone through the process. Or it's really nice that they them. show their face too. I mean, the last thing you want is yes. like, oh no, sorry, like the builder can't meet or no, the builder doesn't come out. I mean, show your face, show us who you are. Can you like, have a conversation with the builder? Right. Are you allowed to have a conversation before you sign the contract with the builder? So do the homework, whether that's through yeah. any of those sources that right. I mentioned, number one. Uh, number two, before you agree, because a lot of times if you're working with a buyer agent, you're working off of board forms for that area and all the agents and the attorneys in that marketplace have agreed that those forms, mm -hmm. uh, you know, are accurate and that's the way the business should be done right now. Right. But, but builders have their, their own, own forms. forms. <laughs> and so those have not been approved by the board. They haven't been approved by the attorney community. They're all They've been approved by the builder's attorney of for course. sure, yeah. and they're protecting the builder. So you need to fully understand what you're getting into with the builder's contract. A mm -hmm. lot of times, and builders should be doing this, so if you're a builder listening, you should be doing this if it's not in your contract. There should be a, an amount of money that is non-refundable, that if you change your mind halfway through the building process and that developer has bought all kinds of like crazy finishes that you picked out because you don't have any style, then why, they shouldn't be stuck with that stuff, <laughs> right? Like, or your style is different than what's yeah. on trend, I right. should say. Uh, they should not be stuck with that. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what's your answer? My answer is... Are you sort of wobbling like me? Uh, yeah, my answer is... Educate is, yourself. My answer then, is not... It's not critical. No. No. It, well, it, but, It's not critical. But again, it's also not critical. Sounds crazy. Well, it's... I mean, it's again, he's talking about it being critical in my mind for, for a buyer's representation. But I mean... If you're only worrying about your commissions, shame on you. And the other the other part of that is too, like you want as much, and, and most buyer agents are not gonna be able to well, get you through this in the, in the sense that like you want, like when, if you go into well, a- but if you but if you ha if you signed a buyer broker like there's not even any question. If you sign a buyer broker, you're good. And I so mean, and that's where he got into that's where like I'm not even understanding this. They're talking about educating your. But if you didn't have him sign a buyer broker, like th that's your own fault. And some states are different, so not okay. everybody can operate a buyer broker. But but he's saying educate them before they walk through to let people know. Well, right, because if they trust agent. you, they want you to come with them yeah. because they're now relying on your expertise to help them. And and so my point is, you either need to work with a buyer that is really an expert in a buyer broker that is really an expert in that community and take your time to really get into as much inventory as possible. Like understand if you're buying in and I'll just use Florida again as an example, one of these big, large communities, if you're going to buy in there, why haven't you as the buyer and you're focused on new construction? Good. But why haven't you looked at 20 resales in that community, like physically go in there and set the showing and look at the resales and then look at all the comps of the resales. Because most of these uh, communities in Florida will start to have resales before they ever, I and mean, we're talking mm -hmm. 800,000 homes, right. before they ever sell out the community. So you need to understand what's that discount? What does the discount look like when I drive mm -hmm. the car off the lot? Right. It's interesting though, because I'm hearing you chat and last year this around this time I was doing um, the St. Jude house down yeah. in, in Texas and they're down over there by A&M. They're doing the same thing, 600, but, but they're selling out like yeah. quickly. Um, but what's super interesting there though, is again, all about educating, especially if you're sort of moving to areas, there's a land developer that owns the land and then there's builders that take four that, or five builders in the community right so yeah. that so that the development never really falls off right so like if a builder can't you know so again there's, well, there's lots of different communities and lots of different ways of, of there's of, a lot of communities like that in florida where those phase one is builder x Oh Phase yeah, no, is this is, Z. I mean, you, your, your neighbors are not the same builder. Yeah. So, I mean, again, which is great oh. too, because if you don't like that builder or what that builder is doing, like the lot right next door. You have options. Yes. I like that too. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, marketeer of the week. I think this is his second marketeer second. of the week. So we're really sucking up to the BA I feel for like, some reason. I feel like it's been more. More than We did his now. book review. That was a book review. That was a marketeer. Yeah. We did something else from the marketeer. The marketeer of the week is the broke agent. If you Yay! You're... You know what's really sad was that I was really planning on going to Anaheim in August. Yeah. 
and I'm not. I don't so know if it's even gonna happen. That's happening. So it's, it's happening. like now it'll be. But almost are you saying two... if it's not happening, you're out? If it's not happening. What if it's happening? Are you in? Oh, I'd be in. Oh, all right. In my, in my mind, it's not happening. Is anything happening? I mean, Disneyland isn't even open yet. I don't know what's happening. I mean. All anyway. right. So the broke agent uh, last week announced that he is officially launching a meme template platform. He is the king of real estate memes. He's partnered with Coffee Contracts to make Coffee this contracts. happen. The the meme platform, which you sign up for, you pay a fee up front and then you pay a monthly, like a thirty five dollars a month, something like that. Hmm. It's somewhere in the thirty how many, range. Is it saying how many memes you get? Uh, so there are already 65 plus meme style templates, lead gen Instagram stories, and some funny caption ideas for social. All of this completely customizable where you can change up the wording and the photos so you can pop in your photos. We're mm -hmm. going to scroll some of those right now and you're, you put your branding on it. Uh, it won't have a huge broke agent watermark on it or nothing like that. It's all you. It's all your stuff. Mm -hmm. And this has been a big project of his. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, so he, blah, but, blah, blah. But his punchline here is humor is the best form of marketing. And so these memes are very light and engaging. Yeah, I mean, they're not they're not your traditional broke agent memes. Though. Honey, stop the scrolling. Yeah. Boom. A, a nice photo of your listing and then the listing detail uh, address below. Mm -hmm. I like this one. This is just a, a sample meme of just text, right? So you would post this as m more of a branding play. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we could copy that and put it into our own background. We could copy this text. We could do that. You know, because if you like it that much. Because BA, you've been ripping off memes. That's how you built the broke agent account. Maybe we'll rip off your memes. But here's one. In my experience, you should never use the word promise in real estate. Having said that, I promise you will not regret using hmm. me as your real okay, estate don't agent. don't steal that one. Maybe do that at like no. Valentine's Day. I no, don't know. I don't know. That's, that's. I like this one. Buyer beware. Beware of how sick these new listing photos are. So that's like a good teaser. Yeah. Good right. teaser there. And uh, so. Well, what was interesting there is the buyer beware didn't match up with the photo. So it immediately makes you stop. Yes. Yeah. It does. It makes it you did, stop scrolling, really. which is, which is cool. So yeah. the other part of this is there's 65 plus that are uploaded now. So when you sign in, but, uh, and by the way, there's no affiliate link in this video. Like we're not, oh, we're not, we're not, we're not, getting we're not paid supporting for this. you. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> we're just commending you. I'm not making any money out of this deal, but, uh, he'll also, you know, cause you're doing the monthly, he's going to every single month upload new original content. Well, he better. Yeah. I mean, if I'm paying $35 yeah, a yeah. month, I'm not going to recycle the 65 <laughs> memes you're using no, every no. week. He's going to keep uploading new content. And so if you're an agent, and I've heard this from agents all the time, I just don't have the time to be posting on Instagram. This gives you an easy way, a clean look, and something that does have a little bit of humor. Does he post for you too? No, no, just, no. Just you, templates. You're taking the templates and you got to post. So I guess that's still, but the reason why people say they don't have time to post is they don't have time they to overthink it. Yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. have time to think of the creative. And so yeah. he's doing that for you. So but then BA, the copy, oh my goodness, you better start being a copywriter too, BA. It's all about the copy. It's all about the copy, honey. It is. All, all right. about the copy. BA, job well done. Uh, we went a little long on this episode. I've uh -oh. got a, Sorry, got guys, a call bye. here. Uh, keep it real. We'll see you guys next week. See ya.